Hey guys, in this video I'm going to run through some numerical examples where we work out whether a production function exhibits increasing, decreasing or constant returns to scale. I did make another video that goes through just the basics of returns to scale. I will link to that in the description below. Okay, so let's get started. In this video, I'm going to consider four different production functions. Each production function uses the inputs capital K and labor L. Now this is important since returns to scale is all about thinking about what the effect of increasing our inputs has on the firm's output Q. So let's start with number one. Q, the firm's quantity, is equal to the level of capital they have plus the level of labor. The first thing I'm going to do is to include some functional notation so it's clear that the firm's output Q is equal to a function of the firm's inputs, that's the variables capital and labor, which is just equal to, in this particular case, K plus L. I always add this in so I can be really clear about our inputs to production. Recall the returns to scale is all about thinking about how output changes when our inputs to production change. So let's imagine that I double my inputs. So I'm going to evaluate the function with two times the level of capital and two times the level of labor. Well, because I'm doing that, when I rewrite the form of our production function, K plus L, I'm going to place two times K and two times L every time I see K and L in our original function because we're doubling our inputs. So the production function evaluated with double each input is equal to 2k plus 2l. Now we want to find out how much our original output has increased by given these increases in our inputs. Well, my original output q was just equal to k plus l. So my strategy here, and this is the general strategy, is to try to factor out that exact expression from our revised function evaluated with double the inputs. This is going to tell me what factor our original output has changed by. And it's a bit of an art, but you do get used to it and good at it with practice. With this function, for instance, if I factor out two here from the expression, I get two times K plus L. Now K plus L was just equal to our original function, which was equal to Q. So I can get two times Q out of this as well. And so you can see that I've doubled all my inputs and I got back exactly double my original output. This behavior of the production function is called constant returns to scale. Okay, so let's have a look at our second example. Q is equal to five times K squared plus L squared. Again, it's best to rewrite with the functional notation just so I can be clear. So I get Q is a function of capital and labor, which is equal to five times K squared plus L squared. Let's change all of our inputs by some factor, and it can be any factor as long as we are increasing the inputs. Let's make it three so that we evaluate our function with three times the level of capital and three times the level of labor. Now this is going to give us five times three K all squared plus three times L all squared. Remember every time I have capital or labor in my original function, I have to replace it now with three times L and three times K. This example is good because it illustrates that I have to make sure that all the operations that were done on our original levels of capital and labor now include the factor 3, 2. Distributing the power term we get 5 times 3 squared times k squared plus 3 squared times l squared. I'm going to factor out the original production function just like I did in the last question. And if you recall, our original function was just five times K squared plus L squared. And so the revised function is almost exactly the same, except each term is multiplied by three squared. So if I factor out three squared, I get three squared times five times K squared plus L squared. Now three squared is just equal to nine. So we get nine times five times K squared plus L squared which was the expression for our original output. This is increasing returns to scale. We increased all of our inputs by some amount and our output increases by more than that factor. Great, I hope you guys are getting the hang of it now. Let's go to the third example. We have output is equal to four times K to the power of a third times L to the power of a third. Now I'll put my functional notation in and let's evaluate this production function with double the level of inputs. So I have my production function evaluated with 2K and 2L is equal to four times 
2k all to the power of a third times 2l all to the power of a third. So what we want to do is to distribute the exponent. So we get 4 times 2 to the power of a third times k to the power of a third times 2 to the power of a third times l to the power of a third. Now we're going to aim to factor out this original production function here. I can do that by firstly bringing all of the 2 or both of the 2 to the power of a third to the front. Now multiplying those two terms together, I get 2 to the power of 2 thirds times 4 times k to the power of a third times l to the power of a third, which was our original production function, which was equal to our original output level q. Now we can check it out using our calculator here that 2 to the power of 2 thirds is less than 2. In fact, it's 1.5 with change. So this production function here exhibits decreasing returns to scale which means that our output has increased by less than the factor that we increased our inputs by. Okay, so let's do the last one here. And in this example, let's increase our inputs to production by some abstract t rather than some specific number. The production function that we'll be working with is q is equal to k to the power of a half times l to the power of a half. So we'll do as we did before and just rewrite with our functional notation. And this time we will increase each of our inputs by factor t. So we get t times k to the power of a half times t times l to the power of a half. Similar to our last example, we're going to distribute the exponents through. So we get t to the power of a half times k to the power of a half times t to the power of a half times l to the power of a half. I'm just going to gather all my t's up at the front and then multiply those two t terms together. So I get t times k to the half times l to the half, which was just our original production function, which was equal to q. So this is constant returns to scale again. We have increased our inputs by some factor t and we have gotten t times the original output back. Okay, so that's it. I hope that helped. I really hope that helped and it'll help you get through your examples you have at home or in class. So before you go, I wanted to make some more general claims about examples three and four here, which are specific examples of a more general production function form called the Cobb-Douglas production function. If your production function is a Cobb-Douglas production function, it can be represented of the form q is equal to a times k to the power of alpha times l to the power of beta. Now in our third example, a was 4 and alpha and beta were both a third. And then in our fourth example, a was 1 and alpha and beta were a half. Now the reason why it's important for returns to scale is that actually with Cobb-Douglas we can just have a look at the value of the exponents and we can see really clearly and straight away um, what returns to scale the production function exhibits. In particular, if alpha plus beta is equal to 1, then we have constant returns to scale. If it's the case that alpha plus beta is greater than 1, then we have increasing returns to scale. Or if alpha plus beta is less than 1, we have decreasing returns to scale. Okay, that's it. I hope it helped. Please like and subscribe, check out my other videos, and have fun studying.